Welcome to Leverage Data for Mission-Driven Organizations. Today we'll be joined by three experts in their fields, Nish Pangali from SAP, Wells Hatch from City Year, and Prabodh Chiplankar from KPIT Sparta Consulting. You are being recorded today, so this seminar will be available to you on the TechSoup website along with past webinars and other events at TechSoup.org slash community slash event dash webinars. You can find this webinar and other archived events there at your convenience. You will receive a link to this presentation, all the materials discussed, and the full recording later today. If you are tweeting this event, feel free to use the hashtag TechSoup. As I mentioned before, my name is Becky Wiegand. I am an Interactive Events Producer here at TechSoup. I have been with the organization for about five and a half years, and prior to that worked at small nonprofits in Washington, D.C., Oakland, California, and San Francisco. I have worked as a writer and an editor, but was often the, the accidental techie at the nonprofits where I worked, having to find solutions to tech problems about which I had little knowledge. So as your host, I try to make sure that our experts can bring their knowledge to you in a way that is hopefully easy to understand and helps you better meet your mission. We will also be joined today by Nish Pangali, who is the Head of Technology for the Corporate Social Responsibility at SAP. We will hear from Wells Hatch, who is our nonprofit voice on the line today, who is a Senior Vice President and CIO at City Year. We will learn more about his organization in just a few minutes. And then we will also be joined by Prabodh Chiplankar, who is, works in Business Intelligent at Sparta Consulting specifically on SAP products, which is what we will be talking about how SAP's donation program through TechSoup can enable you to hopefully leverage your data to meet your mission. You will also see Ali Vazdikian in the chat and possibly Bijan Yamanashvar in the chat as well responding to questions from TechSoup's end. We will be covering today a quick introduction of TechSoup. We will be doing a quick poll of you to see what ways you are managing your data currently. Then we will introduce Nish to talk about corporate social responsibility and some of the data solutions that are available through the donation program with TechSoup. We will spend some time hearing from Wells about his experience at City Year, a nonprofit organization all around the country that is working on how they can leverage their data and use dashboards to help them see their impact. And then we'll talk about the Developer Wars, which City Year was part of as a, an event with, with SAP that gave them the opportunity to get, get uh, dashboards created for them by developers to show them examples of how their data could be used and can hopefully provide some examples of how your data can be used at your organizations. And then we'll hear from Prabodh to talk about those dashboards and give some other tips on wrangling your data. We will have time for Q&A at the end, but feel free to post your questions in the chat window throughout the webinar. So quickly jumping into the agenda, who is TechSoup? We are part of TechSoup Global, working toward the day when every nonprofit, library, and social benefit organization has the knowledge and technology resources they need to operate at their full potential. And part of that is providing webinars like this to our audience in the hopes that you can not only access technology donations, but you can learn how to use them and leverage them for your own organization's mission. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. You can read here about some of our impact. We work in 56 different countries around the world with 63 different donor partners including Microsoft, Adobe, Cisco, SAP, Symantec, and many, many others. So if you are not familiar with our donation programs, feel free to visit our website at TechSoup.org where you can access these donations. If you are a library, a public library in the IMLS database, or a nonprofit 501c3, or often small foundations too. So to get us started on the topic of the day, I want to quickly open up this little poll. You can click as many things on the screen as are relevant to you. But the question is how do you currently manage your organization's data? So do you use a tool like Google Docs or SkyDrive or Spreadsheets or an access database or a donor database? So take a moment and click on the screen 
what kinds of things you are using to manage your data currently. Um, and if it's in multiple places, combinations of many of the above, feel free to click that. If you are using business intelligence software now, or a custom built data warehouse, that's helpful for us to know and for our presenters, because this will help inform them as to what types of tools you are currently using to manage and corral all of your various types of data. I'm going to give just another moment so we can have everybody participate in the poll. So 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It looks like 72% are relying on Excel spreadsheets, maybe also using Google Docs and Access Databases. Those are our other top items. Um, that's helpful to know because spreadsheets, while useful and things that we use all day long, may not be the best way to tell your organization's data story. So with that, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our first presenter, Nish Pangali. She is with SAP's Corporate Social Responsibility Division, and she's going to talk to us about the data solutions for nonprofits that are available through the donation program. Welcome, Nish. Thanks, Becky. Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be able to speak with you today. I'll be talking a little bit about our organization and then how we partner with TechSoup to provide some tools to the nonprofit organization um, and how you might be interested in getting started with some tools. Interesting to see so many folks using spreadsheets in Google Docs. Um, that's pretty common not just in the nonprofit sector but also within the corporate sector. And um, the tools we'll be talking about today easily integrate with spreadsheet data and really help provide um, a better way to look at your data, to analyze it, to visualize some trends um, in a very easy to access fashion. So I'll let some of the technical experts who are coming up next talk to you a little bit more about that. That's a little bit of a preview. Um, the Corporate Social Responsibility Organization at SAP is really focused on helping SAP's vision and elevating it, which is to help the world run better and to improve people's lives. We have three focus areas um, where we contribute into the community. The first is talent. We do a number of different things, including volunteering. We had just completed our month of service in October where we volunteer around the globe. We also have some really unique opportunities for our employee population, things like social sabbaticals where high potential employees from the company can actually go to a nonprofit for a period of time, six to eight weeks, and help them launch their business, work on a business plan, help them with a specific need. We also have other skills-based volunteering initiatives that we provide out to the community. So trying to do a lot of things to serve the community and also make the employee experience for SAP employees richer. Technology is my focus area, and we really look at leveling the competitive playing field for the amazing organizations that all of you represent today. We try to provide technology that is applicable to the nonprofit sector, that's easy for you to use, and of course is available as a donation. And then finally, capital. Each of our regions around the world provide grants, and we have grant cycles that nonprofits can apply to, and if selected, will receive grants from SAP. So we really try to provide a comprehensive approach to social change in the sector. From a technology perspective, we offer a number of different solutions. The analytics solutions are the focus of today's session. That's what we do in partnership with TechSoup. SAP is a large company, so we also have a number of other uh, solutions available. We recently launched a couple of cloud solutions in a pilot fashion. So you can uh, learn more about that in a, a future webcast that SAP will host or by uh, visiting our, uh, our website. There's also donations that we make in a couple different areas. So we, again, try to provide a holistic approach to technologies, but select the ones that are the most applicable for the nonprofit sector really want to make sure that it's the right technology for the right organization. When we look at the solutions that are available in partnership with TechSoup, there's three today. SAP Lumera, Crystal Reports, and Crystal Dashboards. I'm actually going to start in the middle of the slide with Crystal Reports. This solution is really sort of an entry point for a lot of organizations. It's the highest downloaded solution that we have on our platform. And SAP donates in total about over 1,000 analytic solutions globally each year. So we have a pretty rich program here in partnership with TechSoup. The majority of those are still uh, leading with Crystal Reports. 
Crystal, of course, is a great tool for those of you who are really interested in moving from spreadsheets and manual reporting to a more automated process. It provides you with the ability to automate your reporting. It can actually customize and send out reports on a regular basis, so you don't actually have to rely on personnel to cut and send reports. The system can do it for you. And there's actually some more enhanced capabilities um, that are available which will allow you to even create what looks like web-based reporting, but it's all standard delivered in Crystal Reports. Interact, integrates directly with spreadsheets, of course, and other data systems. And we did have a webcast, which is in a link that I have coming up in, a sli in two slides, that featured another nonprofit, Pro Seniors Incorporated, and they talked about how they use Crystal Reports. So if you'd like to hear another nonprofit perspective and hear a little bit about tips getting started with Crystal Reports specifically, um, that's a webcast that you can listen to at your leisure. If we move to the left, I would say the next area um, to look at would be Lumira. Lumira is the most recent addition to our donation platform. It's a fantastic visual intelligence solution. It allows you to really visualize your data in an easy way. You can simply upload a spreadsheet or connect into a database. And this provides more of a graphical format to look at trending information. And you'll hear from our next two speakers a little bit about how seniors have been able to take their data and visualize it in this fashion. So really taking a look at what are the trends, um, if you want to share information collaboratively within your organization, there is a free cloud account for SAP Lumira with one gigabyte of storage. Anyone can sign up for that. And you can essentially use your license to create the visualizations and share the data through the cloud with any users that you want to enable. So that's a really great tool for collaboration and analyzing your data. We move all the way to the right. Crystal Dashboard Design is sort of the most advanced solution, I would say, out of these three. This solution really allows organizations to take their data and provide a single source of the truth out to the community. So if you're looking at having a dashboard embedded in your website, for example, if you want your IT organization to really have one source of your data that's presented out externally or even up to your board, up to management, Crystal Dashboard is the solution to do that. So here a little bit about how this was leveraged in the developer war engagement. So those are our three tools available on the donation platform. You can see us on the TechSoup SAP landing page. We'll have a link to that in a couple seconds. One more thing I want to mention before I hand things over to the experts. We also have recently added some fantastic learning content. We know that it's not enough to just donate software. So I talked a little bit about skills-based volunteering. We're looking at and researching opportunities to get more service providers out there available for you, more top talent from SAP available for you. In addition to that, we also want to help you run better. And so one easy way to do that was to also add in e-learning courses for our donation program. So these were added within the last two months, I would say. There's a variety of courses that you can take. Um, they're all available through our TechSoup landing page again, and they're part of our donation program. So I'd encourage you, as you're looking at a solution, to take some time to look at our landing page. You can see the value propositions that is already included there that helps you align to which solution is the right place to start. And then for the solution or solutions you decide to get started with, go ahead and sign up for the e-learning courses. You're able to have a couple of folks access each course that you get donated. And you can then go through that process and get a little ramp up training as well, which is a fantastic asset. So I'll close out with just a couple links. Um, our landing page is the first one, so go ahead and check that out for any solutions that you're interested in having your organization receive. We also have this webcast and other TechSoup webcasts available as recording. And then we have our SVP Corporate Social Responsibility page. So go ahead and look at all of those. We have some tutorials and other reference links on our first landing page. And that should all give you a great running start. So I'll pass things over to our next presenter. Thank you so much, Nish. So I'd like to welcome um, Wells Hatch, who is the CIO and one of the Senior Vice Presidents at City Year, who is going to talk about their technology strategies, particularly around data. And so this is a nonprofit, and we're going to watch a quick little video here just to tell.
for joining today and uh, very much appreciate your indulgence of uh, uh, the video. I'm always humbled by how some stick figures in music can do such a much better job of explaining what City Year does than, than I ever could. Um, uh, very briefly, uh, so my name is Wells Hatch. Very pleased to be here with uh, a couple of the powerhouses really in this space that I've always uh, admired. TechSoup, uh, clearly with uh, what I now understand to be a global mission. I knew it was important and big. I didn't know it was global. Um, SAP, of course, who I've come to know much better uh, recently. Um, uh, and then KPIT, uh, which is a, a really interesting firm doing some great things, both in the social responsibility space and the technology space. Um, the, um, uh, I guess I've got the, uh, the slides here. So um, very briefly, we're um, uh, in uh, 24 cities today, actually 25. The slide's, the slide's a little dated. Um, and we serve about 150,000 students. Um, we have goals of moving in the next five years to uh, many more cities, all of which have in common that they have low-performing schools, and we seek to serve up to 900,000 students with this whole school, whole child model that we have. Put quite simply, we're mentoring and tutoring students, and the core members that we recruit are some of the most dedicated and hardworking people uh, that I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. They're about a little under 3,000 this year uh, in uh, service at City Year. And my job is to make sure that their jobs are easy, or at least not burdened by um, barriers that can be relieved by, by technology. It is humbling uh, every day, really. The, every time I look at this slide, I have to pinch myself because I, uh, when we started working on a technology strategy at City Year, we were um, uh, possibly like uh, many of the folks on the call today, an organization that had grown to the point where there, were a, there was a great variety of point solutions available to solve particular business problems, and there hadn't been enough time, enough planning, and enough in the way of resources to make sure that they talked to each other and that they shared information. So many times data was being replicated, repeated, re-entered, and as a result, we set some what seemed like modest but turned out to be difficult goals to achieve, uh, one of which was to establish a single version of the truth um, and uh, some of the other set of core principles of um, enterprise uh, database uh, management. We've largely achieved that by replacing most everything that was in uh, service uh, three years ago, and it's organized around what we call the core four. And all of these now are we're working toward talking to each other, and they are all the targets of what I describe sometimes as a business intelligence roadmap, um, our efforts to try and get the data to work for the organization as information. Um, so we deal at City Year with two real large realms of data. Uh, the first is uh, very important uh, to us as it is a direct expression of our ability to help students in schools. We uh, borrow, if you will, student performance data from the schools that we work in and look to track grades and assessments uh, for um, the relationship between uh, students ability to do well in school and uh, the extent to which we have been working with them uh, with interventions. And then we have another realm of data which is really all about helping us do our work, getting the job done. And it's the probably much more garden variety, uh, possibly a realm that, that uh, we have in common with uh, most organizations. And it's the human uh, capital management information, it's the financials, it's the performance metrics, and the other measures uh, of resource utilization in an organization. And we refer to that as, as the operational excellence uh, realm. Um, and uh, both are equally challenging to get uh, your arms around. We have and continue to um, work with, uh, well, probably tens of thousands of spreadsheets, uh, as I'm sure that is not an unusual scenario for maybe some of you. We 
um, I, part of my job and part of my team has is a goal of, of really slaying spreadsheets. We, we literally focus on eliminating them wherever we can. I have a big graphic on my whiteboard, which is the, um, uh, the sign uh, of, uh, you know, the, the red zero with a line through it, and inside it's uh, the word lists. We find that uh, if we can pull this off, um, we, we, what we'd like to do is to be able to make the data available to everyone as they need it and really, if possible, probably avoid any downloads or exports or, more, most importantly, versions floating around. Um, so we, uh, we've got uh, uh, specific challenges in each one of these realms. Uh, they have a lot in common. The, Schools, school data that we collect really is, is where we are stewards of uh, the um, uh, trust and uh, uh, privacy and security that the schools and the students entrust us with. Uh, we also are dealing with a very diverse environment of where that data is coming from. We're in 256 schools this year. Um, I would say largely every one of them probably has a little different way of organizing the student performance data. Uh, and we have the goal of working with the raw data in the schools uh, in, in addition to um, aggregating it so that we can report across regions and, and sites. Um, what we did, uh, the, the very unique experience that I had um, uh, earlier this year uh, was to be invited to participate in this developer wars uh, that the um, uh, SAP Users Group um, sponsors each year. And I know Prabodh is going to go into a little more detail about this, but it was eye-opening for us because I think like many of the folks on the call, we are early days in this journey of coming up with a good or complete, even resembling complete approach to managing information and presenting it to the organization. And uh, what we um, uh, were a party to really was uh, giving a, a pretty simple database of uh, student information to a team of developers that were using SAP tools. And they, I, I, I believe they did this in, uh, Prabhu, you're going to have to correct me later, but I believe it was 18 hours. I mean, it was, it was, it was nonstop. They were uh, uh, provided with a diet of pizza and soda. Um, and uh, the occasional person coming in uh, telling jokes, I think, just to lighten the atmosphere. Um, but these folks were uh, experts in use of these tools, and they came back with uh, just what was a, a, a very impressive, eye-opening, kind of knock-your-socks-off a way to view what we had been recording and storing and uh, reporting out in, in uh, a very straightforward sort of you know, flat way. So, I know we'll have an opportunity to look at that a little uh, uh, further in the presentation, but um, it is uh, 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 light years uh, from uh, where we are. The good news is that we can see the path. Um, we've started this journey. We're optimistic about getting there. And the exciting part about participating in developer wars was that we could see uh, what was possible and that it isn't as far away as we thought. So. Um, I'll stop there and um, uh, seed the floor. Thank you all for sharing that experience. And you know, I think we always feel light years away from whatever the coolest, hippest thing is out in the in the internet world. Um, but it's great, and I think that your example is is a good one. That just seeing the possibilities and knowing that there's a path to getting there to a way to really demonstrate the impact of your work in a clearer way, or to visualize it with a tool like Lumera, or to create a dashboard with Crystal dashboards, and be able to show your work in a really visual, easy to understand way is something that I think is so compelling because it does really help tell the story of your impact and of your effectiveness as an organization. And so I'm going to bring Prabhat on to talk a little bit about how he participated in the Developer Wars and give us an example of how he put that data together from some of those thousands of spreadsheets from City Year and created a really enlightening dashboard for them in that 18-hour caffeine and pizza infused 
<laughs> mad dash, um, and also to give us some of his tips on how you can go back to your organization and have opportunities to see the light with um, wrangling your data and how to start doing that. So welcome, Prabod. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, and I appreciate everybody uh, taking the time to uh, attend this webinar. It's a privilege to be around with the organizations like City Year, TechSoup, and SAP. And KPIT uh, is uh, humbled to be part of this experience. My role here at KPIT is to help customers get the best out of their BI and analytics needs. Uh, KPIT as an organization is about 8,000 folks worldwide. Uh, it's a publicly traded organization with about 30 some offices. Uh, and although we are a very commercially driven for-profit organization, there is certainly an element of corporate social responsibility which uh, uh, I take on myself along with some of my other peers in the organizations um, that have taken the opportunity to build relationships with organizations like City Year that are working towards the, the better good and using tools like SAP's components that you looked at a few minutes ago, uh, albeit uh, with dashboard design or Crystal or Lumira, we've been able to help organizations analyze what lies beneath uh, in terms of the collection of data and what actions they can take to better run organizations of their size um, in, in their space. And specific to this webinar, one of the components that we were discussing to share with you were areas in which organizations take their data life cycle and what is important from a best practice perspective, um, what you heard from Wells a couple of minutes ago in terms of the magnitude of data that they collect uh, from the varied sources of institutions that they get data from. For them it's important to be able to see the progress of how their business constituents are being served with the right information, not just the gut feel, but really data that's been driven from realistic collections as well as expectations that are being built on that data. So from a strategy for BI, if you all are looking to go down that path, maybe some of you have already gone down that path, others may be embarking on a journey, uh, it's really important to take into consideration a couple of the components of your organization that help you drive that. And I know in a 20-minute uh, discussion we can't cover everything, but what I've tried to do here is really bring together some best practices that you should consider while setting up teams um, that help drive this technology and this business initiative forward. Uh, and one of the areas that I wanted to share with you was what kinds of skills you would need internally. It's not just an IT ensemble, nor is it just an initiative driven by business. But for most of you that are possibly smaller organizations that have very little possibly IT staff uh, but have a lot of value to provide back on the data that you may end up collecting. So it's really important to understand what the, the business component and constituents in your day-to-day uh, -day business need, whether they are metrics that are driven for um, the, the count of, uh, in, in case of City Year, there was, I'm going to show you some examples. There were very specific metrics that we help derive with discussions with some of the business uh, stakeholders or understanding what they would want in, in their day-to-day um, -day operations. So understanding the KPI from a business perspective. From an analytical skill perspective, when you get raw data, you have to be able to envision how that can be put into better use for easy organ for organizations that are out in the field or either their sales folks or marketing folks or evangelists for your um, for your organization. What kind of information can you provide them that's easiest to understand and it's not too cumbersome for them? So figuring out those either algorithms or the needs that may be predictive in nature or they may be more analytical in nature. That's the skill set that you need to have within the team somewhere. Someone needs to think of that ahead of time before you start just rolling out dashboards to your end user community. And certainly with technologies like SAP and the enablement that they provide you, you certainly need the ability for someone to understand the, the roadmap, the infrastructure, uh, what are the right tools to use, how well can you govern once you roll something out to your end users, and probably the most important thing, how do you manage the quality of your data? Because garbage in gives you garbage out. You all might have heard that before. And it 
magnifies because of the ease of use of these tools, uh, we certainly see a lot of times organizations blaming the, the tool at the end of it, whereas it was really the input that they you know, initially captured. So from an experience that you want to embark on, I would really urge you to build some of these skills within your organization. Uh, of course, this is one element of a three-legged stool, which is the skills of folks. The other is the, the right tool for the job. So as you saw a couple of minutes ago when Nish shared some of the opportunities you have, I would urge you to consider the opportunity to do a proof or some sort of a takeaway from this session to see can we do a very focused business area proof of concept with a tool set um, that's available uh, for you, as well as consider then what kind of organizational uh, involvement would you need uh, based on these three, four things I've listed here. What I, what I want to do now is to show you real quick a dashboard that we had built um, that you heard from Wells as part of the Development Wars initiatives under the SAP uh, user conference several weeks ago. And this was a dashboard we built within a little under 20 hours, uh, all locked up in a room with some pizza and some side jokes, Wells. Uh, you remember some of those? Um, and then we kind of came out with an approach for them to analyze uh, the data that they had provided us in raw Excel spreadsheets. This is the first time we had looked at this information. And we came up with this web interface for them to analyze. And at the grand finale, actually, uh, Wells came out on stage and had never seen this before. And unbeknownst to him, he came on stage and presented this himself as a business user. So really, the power of the tool is what we have tried to show through this small little experience that we were uh, able to create an impact on. So basically, this is the starting point of your dashboard. Um, attendance, behavior, and, and performance is key areas for city year. That was your theme. And when you click on the first attendance, uh, the A for attendance there, you come up with a program overview of how your students or schools that are currently covered are performing within uh, what kind of growth rate are you suspecting for them uh, for the next year? And is that trend high or low? So you notice there's this little gadget on the left, top left. It's a scorecard that tells you where certain schools that are in the 10th grade, where that satisfaction scores are, where the student count for those, and how many schools are being covered. Those are the three KPIs that was important for city year. You can also see that if you click down here, you can create some interactivity here with these, the tools. So right now the growth rate shows green that your trend is looking good. But if today you are at 0.1%, um, chances are you will not do as well because your current growth rate doesn't sustain uh, your future. So you really have to look at, um, you can do some if-then-else analysis here. There are some intervention statistics. As you heard from City Year, they have a lot of volunteers that go to schools and look at literacy, math, attendance, behavior, and they look at how many such volunteers are needed per student or how many students can one volunteer cater to. And there's the ability for them to plot that. On the right, you'll look at the, the big constituent impact, whether it's teacher, principal, or a three to five literacy rate, which are their key components and where they stand vis-a-vis -vis their goals. And then on the bottom right, there's different ways for them to look at um, what kind of intervention drove what kind of attendance. So this is an example of the number of students and how much time was spent in the literacy space, for example. What's really cool about the tools uh, from SAP is that the intuitiveness and the ability for you to build something from the ground up in a very short amount of time is really uh, probably second to none. They are the tool sets of choice that we present to a lot of organizations and pretty much uh, every single time have a 100% match on the needs. And I'll show you a quick uh, trick here that we built for um, City Year. When you click on the Analyze button here, they have a 10-year goal to look at um, how many schools or districts or counties can they go and impact. And what we did was we took some data from um, various government agencies. So we went out on the web, got some information that wasn't provided to us, by the way, so integrating third-party data in here. And we said, well, for these many counties, what is going to be the revenue and expense impact analysis? So before Wells and, and the entire city or folks go on a 
uh, a journey to figure how next year is going to look like. They need to know what kind of funding they need to have for next year. If they increase these many counties, how many more students will they have to serve? What would that mean in terms of their volunteer strength? What would that mean in terms of their uh, financial ability to service them? And what kind of funding should they go for? So when I hit the Update button, notice on the right it shows what are the funds needed based on these five or seven counties that I've picked on the left because your student count will increase. And then at the, at the bottom it shows you how many uh, coaches you will need, the coach count, and then how much would be my ex estimated expense. And it has various categories because they get funding from various categories. It's either in kind or they get it from school um, or from foundations or AmeriCorps. Um, various corporations, and then their expense has three or four different categories. They, there's youth civic leadership, the physical service, the in-school service as an expense line item for them. And if we were to move some of these out, um, you'll see obviously the dashboard would reflect that as well. So when I update that from 37 million, it goes down to 19 million. So very powerful tool, and mind you, this was very limited um, time for us, under 20 hours of pretty much no business discussion with them. But really I think, uh, Wells, you would uh, agree that you saw tremendous value from uh, this demonstration of your data coming out of Excel and just a bunch of flat files that you shared with us. One last tab that I want to share with you is on uh, the student analysis. So we looked at some aggregated data point and we looked at some uh, high level financial impacts. But now if you want to go right down to a student within a particular school and look at the intervention group of that student, you can on the right hand side notice from January till December how that student has performed. And there is the performance, it shows the average within the school, um, and it shows also the, the, the average school grade. And where does your particular student stand? So if I click on grade 7 or if I pick another school uh, individual in that category, you'll notice that the various grade levels uh, show me the comparative on the right hand side for the appropriate student. Uh, and I can pick any other student and see what the variance is. So really powerful um, capability from a tool perspective to showcase the various business dimensions that may be important for your organization. Becky, that's all, that's all I had to share and I'd be happy to take any questions. That's great. Thank you so much for that, Prabod. Really, really interesting stuff. And I know most of us don't have a Prabod and a team of developers <laughs> in our pocket to just work on this kind of stuff for 18 hours straight and come up with an amazing dashboard like that. But it's the light at the end of the tunnel that maybe it wouldn't happen in 18 hours for sure for your organization, but that over the course of two or three months you could be putting your data into something that displays like this that comes out with the results that you need where you know, if you run, for example, a, an animal shelter, you could be entering in how much the expense is for every animal intake. You could be entering in for a domestic violence shelter or inventorying for your um, return to work program <laughs> and what kind of outputs you have for each client that you work with. Um, I'm sure there are so many other examples, but you showed both the funding um, inputs as well and, and the impacts and projections as well as kind of the inventorying of individual students and how their progress is. And that's pretty amazing that one tool can do that. So I think that you know, it's a good example that this is what kind of things you can do with the tools that are available through the donation program. And it is a donation program. There is an admin fee for those products, and that's not charged by SAP. That's a fee that's paid to TechSoup for helping run the program and ensuring that you meet the eligibility requirements. That's sort of our role as a nonprofit, and that helps us pay for providing events like this and other informational things and articles and reports. And so, um, you know, just know that that is available to you. There are probably other tools out there that you could be doing similar dashboarding with, but today's focus was on the experience of, of City Year using the SAP tools and those donations. But I'd love to hear if you have, Prabod, if you have any other tips for people who might just be starting out um, 
I know you said garbage in, garbage out, and I think we've all heard that before when it comes to data. But if you were an organization embarking on your first step, and say you have Excel spreadsheets, and you've got donor data in a da donor database, and you've got data on those, many of those same users on an email list that you can export from your email blast tool, how would you go about what, what advice would you give to that type of organization on how to start um, so that they don't put garbage in or so that they don't set it up the wrong way sure. from the very beginning? Sure, sure. There's a, there's a very common, uh, commonly known concept uh, called master data, and that's whether you are getting your funding from various resources or you are providing it to various other organizations, uh, or if in the case of animal shelter, if there's breeds that you are helping uh, become safer or providing for underprivileged children. Really the master data in terms of either the locations of your centers or the products that you are dealing with or the customers or the suppliers that you are dealing with, if that can be, number one, uh, kept in good quality check, uh, whether it is in a small database or even if it is within Excel files, as long as there is a master reference to some of these key entities of your business, that is a great start for organizations to make sure whether it comes from an email or it comes from a paper trail or a marketing survey or actual system of record that you may be running at your shelter, it's important to really keep track of these key dimensions of your business, number one. And number two, once you have a good collection of such data, whether it's customer, supplier, or product, um, or any kind of transaction, it's really important to envision some sort of a mechanism for your users whether it's a simple financial statement of income and expense, or whether it's uh, the count. In this case, there was a count of coaches in case of city year that was important to them. Um, so if you can help figure out the dimensions in which you want to measure this information, that would be my second step. First, having that quality information together regardless of how many sources it came from. Two, the ability for it to be envisioned as a business metric to be seen. Uh, whether it's a tabular spreadsheet or a graphical interface. And then three, I think a lot of people, it's kind of the fear of the unknown. Becky, and, and I, I would give this to the SAP tool sets I've worked with many in the past, but really the easiest uh, is to identify your business metrics and then choose a tool that can help you get something out within a short amount of time. So within a week or two week period for a very simplistic approach, um, on data, you can really get out a fairly halfway decent looking dashboard without too much training, without involvement of large IT consulting organizations. Uh, and KPIT has helped, uh, especially through this particular program, I'd like to offer maybe if there's the first five organizations that approach uh, in wanting to do this, we'd be happy to outline a quick um, a, you know, a session with them, kind of a lunch and learn either over the phone. Um, to help them identify what those steps ought to be for their organization. Wow, that's a really generous offer. So in case you didn't hear that, folks who are listening, he just offered that the five first organizations that put it out there that they're interested could get a little bit of free consulting time with, with KPIT. So that's really, really generous of you to offer that kind of time. Um, I think you know we have – a lot of people on here that may just be starting out. We might have people that, you know, I know there were a couple of people who responded that they have their own sort of custom built in house data warehouse. And have you worked with folks who are kind of at that end of the spectrum where they have a proprietary, pr sorry, proprietary um, tool that they've built themselves and maybe they want to get unburdened from having to do all of that management and convert to something like this? Is there a, an easy way to take their data out of something else that they might be currently using, whether it's a different um, donor tool or different data warehouse? Is there a, a way to convert that data into something that could be used in, data da in, in a data dashboard like this? Yes. Uh, actually, more often than not, there's already someone who's got something set in. You know, we call it the jack in the box. Either it's a homegrown tool, or it's a, in your, you know, in the case of some of the organizations here, it may be a donor database that comes from a third party, or they're doing it in the cloud. Um, we've been able to extract data, bring it into a consolidated uh, 
record set, whether it's another database or even a flattened out Excel spreadsheet depending on the volume. Um, and then with SAP tool sets, really have been able to turn them around into dashboards like the ones you see on the screen. So that's a very um, uh, common element of where people are in their life cycle. That's terrific. Well, thank you so much for that, Prabodh. We have people in the chat window saying, how can we be part of this? So I think that's how we're doing it. So feel free to put your organization out there in the chat window, and um, we can follow up and pass your contact information along to Prabodh to follow up with after, so you might have one of those lunch and learn sessions, um, which is really very generous of you to offer that time. So thank you. Um, feel free to post any other questions in the chat window that you might have. I have one for Nish if you would get back on the line. Um, thinking of the three different tools that you offer through the donation program with TechSoup as well as the um, e-learning courses, if somebody is just starting out and they are taking that advice that Propoed gave about trying to make sure they've got good wholesome, clean data that they want to put in to something. Um, what tool do you think would be the lowest hanging fruit or the easiest for them to sort of get their feet wet if this is their first foray into sort of trying out some of the data visualization or dashboarding tools or reporting tools? Which one would you recommend? Yeah, you know, that's a really good question. And I think the road's advice is is well taken. I mean, and not only just using quality data, but also you know the, the process perspective. I worked at a different organization years back, and I started early on in nonprofit um, organization as well. And some of the biggest headaches we had were actually just thinking through our process and our end goal. And most of our quote unquote implementation was actually discussions. Um, and the ones that went well and the quickest implementations were ones where we spent more time talking before we started touching the system and lesson learned on the ones where we started messing around in the tool and then we had to kind of come back and retweak. So I think all of that is really important as you think about getting started with these applications, but also in selecting the applications. So I, I would encourage you to first take a look at our landing page, look at the value proposition around each of those solutions, look at some of the free resources, tutorials that we have up there even before you think about e-learning, um, and help decide what problem are you really trying to solve. If it's truly a reporting um, concern that you have, just automating reports, being able to send reports out in an easier fashion, being able to um, kind of look at that sort of uh, operational efficiency area, I would recommend you take a look at Crystal Reports. Um, they're a leading edge uh, reporting tool used by many organizations around the world. It's been an industry standard for uh, well over a decade now. And um, I would say that that's probably a good place to start if you're really looking at just automating reporting. If you're looking at more of the data analysis that the Bode and Wells talked about and showcased with Cityair, um, those can be the other two tools. SAP Lumira, I would say, is more of a personal visualization tool, something that you can actually leverage some data, do some analysis very quickly, share it through a cloud account, and more internal sharing. Um, not necessarily, you can share that externally, but it wouldn't necessarily be something you'd want to post on a website, for example. So if you're really looking at doing some analysis and collaborating in the company, maybe even within teams or across teams, Lumera is a very easy to use application. Um, I am not a technical expert, even though I am the head of technology, but it's more from an initiative perspective. And I was able to use Lumera pretty easily. Um, we have Bijan with us as well. Uh, from uh, our organization, and um, he's been able to use Lumera in a, a self-learning capacity to really help me understand um, what our metrics are around donations, which countries are using the most technology donations through our TechSoup program, where should we look at doing more, um, what is kind of the density analysis, what industries within the nonprofit sector, what types of nonprofits are downloading the most solutions, what should I add to the program. So I'm using this for very real-time decision making, but keeping it internal. And then, um, so that would be more of a Lumira use case. And then as Prabodh and, and Wells have talked about, the dashboard technology I would say is uh, probably a little bit further down the road, still a very easy to use solution for a dashboard. Um, but if you're really looking at mapping your processes, getting clean data, and then showcasing that out, single source of the truth, that's probably where you want to look at the dashboard. So my, my long answer would be uh, Crystal Reports for reporting would be the first place to look. 
Lumira for visualization and data trend analysis, more internal collaboration, and then uh, the dashboard if you're looking at really single source of the truth out. Great. Thank you for that, Nish. That's really helpful, I think, to people not quite sure where to begin. And I've, I've thrown up the page with the additional resources on it that has links to the different product offerings that are available in the donation program. Um, again, you'll receive this information by email later on this afternoon too, so you don't have to worry to try and click links and scribble things down because they're not actually clickable on the screen anyway. And, um, you know, and a couple of other resources. We did a webinar that was specifically on Crystal Reports earlier this year and also a blog post that goes into more detail about what SAP's Lumira does. And I will include a link to the webinars that SAP hosted that are specifically on each of those three tools. So you can go ahead and look at those if you want a deeper dive on any of the three offerings. Um, I'd like to really say thank you so much to Wells for letting us see the dashboard that was created from his data from City Year that gives us a little glimpse into what can happen um, with an organization's mountain of data when it's plugged in in a smart way into a tool that can handle it. So thank you so much for letting us do that, Wells. We really appreciate it. And I, I would wish you a lot of luck at City Year in reaching those goals and hope that these tools will help, you, uh, help enable you to better do that. Um, I'd also like to take a moment to thank our two folks, um, Nish from SAP who just spoke to us, for uh, sharing information about the donation program and the tools available to the nonprofits and libraries on the phone, and also to thank Prabodh from uh, KPIT's Sparta Consulting Division, and especially for the offer to consult with the first five organizations that posted. We have your contact information, and I'll pass that along to Prabodh to follow up with you after the webinar is up. So um, congratulations to you. We don't normally have a little contest in our webinars, but it's great when we have a, an expert who's willing to extend their expertise to our users. Um, so thank you all for joining us today. Feel free to visit the resources that were mentioned and watch for that follow-up email that will be arriving in your inboxes later this afternoon. And I'd also like to thank ReadyTalk who provides the use of their webinar platform for us to present these webinars to you on a regular basis. You can join us next week. We have a webinar on photo storytelling on November 12th at 11 a.m. Pacific Time. And we have a webinar on Windows 8.1 operating system next Thursday at 11 a.m., which is on the 14th of November. So I will share those links in the follow-up email as well in case you'd like to join us for other topics coming up on our webinar schedule. Thank you so much to all of our presenters, and I hope you all have a terrific day.